To start soldering, we identify the side that the components go on. The components always go on the side with the white silk screen. And usually we start with the smallest component and work up to the largest component. And the first, so the first thing we put in is the fuse, and it goes into the position labeled F1 for the fuse. And it's kind of easier to slide it on this board here, use the lid of the box and uh, to support it. And, and all, all the time, whenever we do this, we just simply provide a quick solder and make a nice shiny solder joint. So the next components that go on are the push button switches. And they snap in. And then we tip it upside down. And to make sure that everything's flat, it's always a good idea just to push your finger in the middle here while you're soldering. Make sure you get nice shiny solder joints. Alright, now after those switches go on, then we put on the two toggle switches. Now it's important that these toggle switches align up straight. You may get red switches in your kit versus these green switches. Now the one way that we make sure that these sit straight is to, by actually putting the cover on and then putting two screws, sorry the nuts, down to hold them in place. Just slightly put in here. This ensures that the switches stay in place and then we can turn it upside down and use the box as a support to solder. You don't have to flood these holes with solder, you just need enough for them to make a decent contact. So it's easiest to move the uh, circuit board so that it's convenient to solder rather than trying to solder at a funny angle. Alright, do a ch quick check to make sure there's no uh, solder bridges and then we can take the slit off. The next connector, the, the next piece that goes on is the um, cable connector. The next, the next piece that goes on is the cable connector and you need to make sure that the wires go in the holes before you snap it in place. You should click in firmly and push down. Once again we can use the box to hold things. These connections don't need much solder, they're very fine. Because these are so close it's always a good idea to do a quick check to make sure that None of the solder has bridged connections. So the last thing that gets soldered onto the board is the power cable. <clears throat> now, before you put the power cable on, remember that you need to pass it through the lid of the box. The small hole is by itself. Pass it through the lid. Tie a small knot. This will stop the cable from pulling out through the lid if you ever drop your box or it gets jerked for some reason. The last step on the circuit board is to put the power cable on. And as I said, this ca cable has been pushed through the hole in the lid of the box. We've tied a knot in it, and then we're going to insert it into the board. It's important to make sure that the positive wire goes through the 12 volt positive hole here. In this case, uh, the positive wire is a copper color, and that's connected to the 
uh, alligator clip at the other side, which is red. So I'm going to push these in, trying to make sure not to catch any of the little wires. Flip it over and then fold it back to keep the wires in place. You may need someone to help you to do this to, so that the wires don't come out. a nice amount of solder on these because all our power is coming in through this connection so we want to make sure it's a nice solid connection and the solder has flowed. Now if you have snips and you want to you can always trim off any excess. Uh, these are underneath the board and out of the way so it really doesn't matter if they stick out. So at this point the wiring is complete but now the most important thing to do is to test it. And to test it we need to put the fuse in first so I'm going to snip off the wire and leave about a quarter of an inch of wire remaining and push it in to the fuse holder, push it down nice and firmly. First thing we do is we check on the back one more time, look for any solder bridging the joints. Uh, oh, it appears that I've forgotten to solder two of these terminals on. I didn't do those. That's why it's always a good idea to check. Once again, I'll look for any bad solder joints. If you see something that doesn't look very good, usually you can just touch it with a solder, soldering iron, and it will clean right up. Now, before you start hooking it up to a real battery, it's always a good idea to check your circuit board before you continue. And the easy way to do that is to get a multimeter, if you have one, set it for ohms, and you see that normally it will show a one or some sort of symbol to say that there is no resistance. If I touch these probes together, you can see that it's now measuring a very low resistance. So the trick is, take your clips, power clips, and hook them up to the meter. First of all, if, if, if it's good, the reading will stay infinity. When you know you have a problem is when you see that go down to zero, or close to it. And then what you need to do is, one by one, activate each of the switches, both directions, and then do multiple switches. So push both of these switches down, take the meter, this switch forward, this switch forward, this switch back, this switch back. Basically try every combination that you would normally use when you're flying your ROV. And all through that, nothing should happen over here. If you get that response, then there are probably no short circuits on your board and you're ready to go. Uh, ready to hook it back in to its box and start flying your ROV. Once we've tested the board, it's time to put it in its, in its box. And we basically slide it in and make sure that the black connector just pushes through the square hole just a little bit. That'll let the, holes, that'll let the uh, screw holes line up inside. If you have a magnetic screwdriver, these screws go in much easier. We use the small silver screws to attach the board into the box. Once the board's in, we can add the caps to the push buttons. Basically just put them in and give them a good firm push. Slide the lid down. You may need to uh, just fold that cord inside a little bit. Just snap down and then the black screws go in place. You notice we did not end up using the uh, nuts to hold the switches in. They were just there to help us position it while we soldered them in place. And our box is complete with our push buttons. And our switches should spring back to the center.